Namaskar. So today I'd like to explore and share with you my personal experience of my journey with yoga and meditation and as an artist. So what's this relationship between creativity, flow, and yoga and meditation? My story, uh, I'll start with my experience as a young artist in high school. Up until that point, I really hadn't had much formal instruction in art. I loved art from when I was a small child, um, always painting, always drawing, really interested to learn how to make things look realistic, etc. cetera. And, uh, but I was in a school system where they didn't really have an art program until I reached um, high school. And then I was in quite a good art program. And at one point, my teacher said to me, you know, yeah, you're technically good, but you're not creative. And this really, oh, it really went deep into my mind and kind of created a complex because I was attracted to go to art school, but I didn't have confidence because I felt, well, I'm not really creative enough. You know, I'm just technically good. So when I went to university, I still couldn't keep away from art classes. I had to sign up for art classes. And uh, I decided to skip the boring studio classes and go into the more advanced drawing because the teacher let me in. And, uh, you know, I remember my teacher when I was doing life drawings, just saying something which I found so cryptic, you know, kind of a paradox. She was like, you have to draw the light. And I'm like, how can I draw light? This is a charcoal drawing class. We're using black, you know, how can I draw light? And um, I was struggling with that and I was struggling with my drawing. And then I just remember at one point, no, click. I kind of understood what she meant about drawing the space and drawing the light. Um, and uh, my drawing transformed and it just went to a whole new level. Uh, and then I wanted to explore doing abstract stuff. I wanted to feel creative because creative people don't just need to like draw from life. They just, you know, start drawing and something beautiful happens. And so I, uh, I had an assignment where all she did was give us, you know, one big, huge canvas and you just have to fill it up. Uh, this was an oil painting class. And she's like, you know, the, the assignment was just at the end of uh, the next four weeks, you have to have a painting. And I was so excited. Oh, I'm gonna do something creative. I'm gonna do something abstract. And the fact is that I got completely blocked. Facing that empty canvas just blocked me. I just, <laughs> I just couldn't get started. It actually made me anxious. I'd go in front of it and I think I was struggling with this idea. I'm not creative. I don't know what to do. How should I even start? And I, you know, at one point, okay, I forced myself, started to put some color on it, but then I immediately started criticizing myself. I wasn't happy with it. I'm like, why am I doing this? Oh, it's not going to come out. I don't like it. And this self-criticism was going on in my head. And so I couldn't get anywhere. And, uh, and then um, it was becoming closer and closer to the deadline and I still hadn't done anything. And uh, I'm also, you know, have a kind of, I don't know, perfectionism or work ethic or something. I couldn't imagine failing a class with such an open-ended assignment. And so... I forced myself, you know, it was really last few days before the assignment was due and I forced myself, I'm not going to go anywhere. I have to get past this. I just have to start. And so I started painting and painting and painting and painting and I really didn't like it, you know, uh, but I kept going. That critical voice was still there, but I kept going. And at one point, the drawing just took, the painting just took over by itself. You know, I stopped thinking and I just started to see shapes, forms, meaning evolving out of the painting. The painting had a huge amount of red in it and a lot of black. And then these flames like started to dance and to emerge from the bottom. I mean, the whole painting was pretty intense. I wouldn't say it was necessarily beautiful. I think it was just, it was like a burning through my own blockages just to do it. And it was extremely cathartic. Uh, somehow, like, 
I remember painting even through an entire night, like hardly sleeping. And while I was dreaming that night, my mind continued to flow through the painting. It was like I was continuing to paint. And uh, when I presented it, my teacher was like, okay, this is different than what you've done until now. Uh, she challenged me a bit, like, is there some difference, do you think, between art and therapy? And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. But for me, it was necessary. It was like an unblocking of a flow. So after that, uh, it became a lot easier to, to enter. I still had anxiety when I'd be facing a blank canvas, but it got better. Soon after that, I began my journey with yoga and meditation. And I didn't continue in the years that I really went deep into yoga and meditation. I wasn't painting so much anymore. I was, um, my energies were going in different directions, but I was doing a lot of yoga and meditation. What's interesting is that usually, you know, to continue to develop a skill, you have to keep practicing it every day, every day, and you know, to see improvements. But um, I hadn't painted for a while. And then I had an opportunity to do some apprenticeship with a, with a painter. Um, and my painting had really changed. You know, now it was full of a whole new palette of colors where I'd been very attracted to reds and strong colors. Now it was full of blues and um, luminous uh, colors and kind of spiritual shapes and, 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 um, and like, Peacefulness, no, was transmitting through the through the painting. Um, more attracted also to mandalas and and yeah, my painting had developed, had gone to another level because my mind had gone to another level. Um, even when I came here to Romania, I I saw there was a mural on the wall and it, it needed to be painted over. And I thought, oh, I'll just make a big mural on this wall because I'd been in Italy for some years and there a painter had made beautiful, beautiful um, murals on the wall of like oceans with dolphins. And I thought, okay, I'll make a forest with fairies and with unicorns. And, and to my surprise, I hadn't lost my ability to paint. Rather, once again, I felt like it had grown, it had developed, not because my skills were being exercised, but I think because my mind had continued to evolve. And whatever you do on the creative level is a reflection of your mind. Not only that, but all of us have an immense amount of talent and hidden treasures inside, I am convinced, you know, because there are layers of the mind that become more and more subtle. In yoga psychology, there is, um, uh, a model of the human mind called koshas. And the first layers of the mind are where we have, you know, our sensorial input, where we are attracted by our desires, by our impulses. Um, but then you have the intellect. No, and this is both where we do, where we spend a lot of our time there. This is the ordinary experience of the self and the ego and our thinking mind, our analytical mind, our busy thoughts. Um, but you can go deeper than that. And then you start to access something transcendental. So this transcendental mind, which is uh, where you could say like, there, it is not just an experience of our individual ego. These are the experiences that we have a feeling a flow that is much greater than ourselves just sort of take over and wisdom and un unexpected things are just coming through that you, you feel more like you're discovering than that you are doing with your normal doer eye. Um, that was the taste uh, that I'd had when I was struggling, you know, to break through my critical, uh, <laughs> self-critical mind and get into the creative flow with that with that uh, turning point painting, the red painting that I did. Um, this is what usually happens in, with creativity is that we, um, we block ourselves from accessing that. We block ourselves from going deeper. We get stuck on the analytical layer with our critic, our inner critic. And to do anything creative, to get to the level of like, where there's actual creative genius, it's not just in some people. Actually, every single human mind is designed, has all of these koshas and 
every single human mind can penetrate through and get into the flow, get in contact with that transcendental cosmic flow of inspiration, uh, energy, information that exists, wisdom, archetypes, metaphors, you know, all of the kind of creative, non-linear, poetic type of thinking. It's originating from these deeper layers of the mind. Ah, some types of creativity do stay just on the more intellectual layer and they don't really manage to touch us. They don't have that power, that genius that true creativity has. So, you know, we have kind of a fixed mindset often like, oh, some people are talented, some people aren't, you know, it's just either you're born with it or not. Um, I really think there's a whole lot more creative potential in every single human being um, than is currently being tapped. And that's because of how our education system works. You know, kids getting messages like I did, you know, that you're not creative or you don't have a good voice. Um, they block us, they demoralize us. We think, okay, it's just for some people, it's not for me. And we don't continue to persist. It, uh, those voices become part of our inner critic. You know, we have an inner critic anyway, but it can get amplified by educational experiences that don't encourage us, that don't uh, support us, that don't help us to learn how to access the deeper parts of our mind. This is where I think that, you know, yoga and meditation uh, really enhance the ability to be creative, to access your own inner genius, because what are you doing? When you do meditation, you learn to silence the busy mind, the analytical mind, that first layer of the mind. You learn to transcend it. You learn to withdraw your mind from that layer and to go deeper. Now, your point of meditation isn't just to get some creative inspiration. It's to go all the way into the very core, the very shining essence of your mind. Um, that's what meditation is. It's to be able to make the mind one pointed. But in that process, because you're learning to get past that surface level of the mind and to access the deeper flow that's inside, you know, I think one of the side effects and benefits is that it can supercharge and enhance your, your creativity. Um, it's, uh, you know, an experience of letting go. I experience that, you know, I find now that it's easier for me to um, just close my eyes and to even in just a few minutes to tap into a deeper source of inspiration. Like before I take the videos, you now I close my eyes, I try to go inside, I try to, you know, feel that flow from within and it comes. So my experience of creativity at the moment, I haven't been painting as much. I love to paint. I would love to organize uh, an artist's retreat. If you're interested, no, let me know and we will do it. Um, but uh, yeah, the creativity is coming in many, many other forms in my life. And, you know, I remember even in a uh, training center, one of my biggest issues for deciding to dedicate my life to my spiritual practice and to sharing and teaching was Oh, but should I be an artist or should I be a yogi and a teacher? Um, and you know, in the end, I felt well. There's a lot of there's a lot of artists. There's just not a lot of people that are um, sharing uh, and teaching meditation, and and there's such a need for it. Um, and I thought that I would have to leave it behind and part of that kind of letting go and renouncing or whatever. But in the end. You know, it, came, it I had so many opportunities already within my training. I was always asked to make, you know, the decorations for our big gatherings, for our retreats. And I would make very elaborate and very artistic things. And, and everybody would be like, wow, it's so inspiring and, and, and uh, uh, such a creative flow to be with you. And, you know, slowly that, that, that complex, that idea of that I'm not creative, like I started to realize, wait a minute, maybe... Maybe I am creative after all. And, uh, and I've had many experiences with making, you know, editing videos or uh, working with multimedia, organizing theater performances, um, writing stories for children. Uh, many manifestations of creativity, I feel, have been unlocked from overcoming uh, 
you know, those, those inhibitions, those, that self-talk and being able to have this kind of connection, you know, it's like, it's like, it starts out small, like, like you're making a walk through the forest and you have to clear out the brush to make a path. But then slowly, you know, with, with practice, with repeated practice of meditation, that connection to the deeper layers of your mind starts to become like a highway, you know, where you, uh, uh, easily can access access it. So um, if you want to enhance your creativity, uh, you've always longed to be more creative, uh, or you're already a creative artist, you know, tapping into the, the deeper layers of the mind through meditation is it's only going to uh, enhance that it's only going to help it to flourish to develop to blossom. I think there's so many seeds inside. They just need a little bit of nourishing, a little bit of encouragement to start to express. Uh, and, you know, the arts, aesthetic sciences, they're a bridge between the ordinary level of consciousness and, and experiencing um, the spiritual dimensions of life. Uh, and that's because the artists, you know, they manage to tap into these deeper layers of the mind and those deeper layers of the mind draw us, can, can draw us towards, towards spirituality itself. So, um, yeah, I wish, all, I wish that everybody in the world could really discover their inner artist, could their inner poet, uh, and, and how much, um, creativity is actually there waiting to be tapped into, waiting to be discovered. Um, it's like an undercurrent, you know, it's like the water that you don't see on the surface of the land. It's, it's um, the ground water. You have to drill down and tap into it. But once you make that well, you know, it will constantly be full of water. So make your well, you know, discover your, your creativity by drilling into your mind and, and connecting to that, 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 perpetual flow of inspiration. All of the great art, I feel, somehow connects to the big ideas, you know, the big ideas that connect us to, to, towards spirituality, towards mysticism, towards a personally experienced and lived uh, connection to the universe, you know, contemplating, like, how can I paint? Yeah, when I, with my own journey with art, like, as it evolved, it was like, how can I paint love? <laughs> how can I, how can I show that? How can I, how can I bring that out? You know, because it's one of the subtlest things that you're trying to catch or describe is this forces of love, but even just beauty, truth, you know, those are the big inspirational forces. So, uh, yeah, take the benefit of meditation <laughs> to enhance your own creativity and, um, and discover much, much more than just that. Uh, to nourish your very soul and whatever you, however you will decide to express that or experience that your life will, will uh, improve and, and shine. So give me your comments. I'm really <laughs> curious. Namaskar.